hold up some of the sample shorts to see what size you are. They're all labeled for you. And then you're going to find the corresponding pattern. This one is a big S for small and you're going to start by laying down your fabric folded in half and lay out your pieces before you trace and cut them. Make sure they all fit and that there are no issues with your fabric. Start with your waistband, then your back and your front. The waistband must line up with the fold of your fabric. Use this waxy chalk stuff to do your tracing. You're going to hold down your pattern firmly and press firmly with the chalk. Make sure your lines are visible. There are three different colors depending on what fabric you're using. One might be better than the other. If your fabric has an imperfection like mine, where it's not perfectly straight on the grain, when it's folded in half perfectly, you get this little extra bit at the top. Make sure you cut that off and don't include it in your measurement for the waistband. Otherwise, your waistband will be crooked and cause you problems later on. Channel your inner perfectionist for this stage. The cutting needs to be well done. This will help you later on in your project. Make sure your cuts are using the full length of the scissors and not just choppy. You can see here when I pull the waistband open that this is why we did it on the fold. Now it's twice as long. You can see where it was folded in half right here. And I'm not going to need my waistband until the end of this project. So I'm going to fold it up and keep it in my bin safely until it is needed. Cut out the rest of your pieces with the same accuracy. Since your fabric is folded in half, you'll end up with two backs and two fronts. Once all your pieces are cut out, start with the two back pieces face up. You'll notice these are the larger ones. They should be noticeably larger. If not, you've done something wrong with your cutting and measuring. So take both the back pieces and put them back to back like this face up. Now take your fronts, which are the noticeably smaller pieces, and you're going to put them face down, lining up the one edge, the edge that is opposite from the curve on both sides. You want this edge to line up absolutely perfectly. You don't want to be able to see the right side of the top at all. Line them up with your fingers and then we're going to pin this in place. You'll notice that once I have this edge in place, the other side, the side with the curves, does not match up. And this is how it is supposed to be. So don't worry about the curves matching up, just that one side I showed you. Instead of pinning with pins, we're gonna use these wonder clips I got off Amazon. They're super awesome. They're fast and easy to use and you don't poke yourself. They're also really fast to take off while you're sewing. So we're gonna pin down this edge that we're gonna sew now that our fabric is lined up perfectly. Three clips on each side is all you'll need. Now let's take these over to the sewing machine. Have a look at your throat plate. We are going to be using the 5 8 line as our seam allowance. So the edge of our fabric will line up with that 5 8 line and we'll use it as our guide as we sew. Your settings should be on A and we're going to start by going forward 4 to 5 stitches, holding down the reverse stitch lever and going backward 4 to 5 stitches for a back stitch and then continuing forward. We'll take the clip out as we go. If you feel like the machine is getting out of control, go a little slower. Remember, we're going for accuracy over speed. You'll get faster naturally as you get more comfortable with the machine. When you come up to a clip or a pin, you want to stop well in advance so that you can get it out without having your fingers in the way. Here's my line of stitching. You can see that I've backstitched when I started and when I ended. And now we're going to take it back to the machine to do a seam finish. Turn your settings to C and line up your fabric with the edge of the presser foot just like you did with your seam sample before. This is what your final line of stitching will look like, your A stitch with your C stitch, which is your seam finish. You're going to do this for both sets of back and front pieces of fabric. Notice that it's not going to line up on that curved side, but it will line up on your sewed side. This is perfect. Now we're going to unfold them and press the seam down with the iron. Once you've done that, unwrap one of your pieces face up. Put the other side face down and you'll notice that both the front should line up at this point and both the back should line up at this point. So the curves are going to line up now and those are the next parts that we're going to sew. As long as both curves are lining up, you don't have to worry about anything else lining up. But make sure that there's no overlapping like this. They need to be completely lined up so you shouldn't be able to see the right side of the fabric on the other piece 
we're going to pin this with our wonder clips or our pins. Don't worry about the middle part if it doesn't lay flat. Again, it's just the curve that you want to be lined up. If you're not going to be using wonder clips, this is the proper way to pin. Pin heads will always go to the outside of the fabric. This way, when you're sewing, you can pull them out easily and without poking yourself. The pin goes through all the layers of the fabric and comes back up through all the layers of the fabric. Never put them vertical like this or with heads to the outside. It will just make it way harder on yourself. So pin heads to the outside. Okay, let's sew these curves up. So you're going to set your pattern selector dial to A, line up with the 5 8 line, do your back stitch when you start and when you end this stitching. You're going to follow the 5 8 line with the curve of the fabric and we are just going to follow the curve right to the end. We're not continuing down. You're going to do a back stitch when you get here. Bring your take up lever up and cut your strings. Here is what it should look like. Notice that I did my stitching right to the end of the curve, but did not go down here. That is going to turn into the crotch of your shorts and you cannot sew it at this stage. Let's do our seam finish by turning the pattern selector dial to C. We're going to line up the edge of the fabric with the edge of the presser foot, backstitching when we start and when we end, we're going to follow that curve again. You're going to notice the string is now going in a zigzag pattern and we're going to follow that E stitch all the way over. Go ahead and do both sides, both curves, and you're going to end up with something that looks like this. Stay tuned for part two.